Can't hear you. What? 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 Huh? Well. Yeah. This... I didn't want to have to sleep again anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this. Actually, tense. now that now that I think about it, it really isn't going to be that much different than how it is now, <laughs> with with my my job always needing me early in the goddamn morning. Yeah. Anyway, um, we just got back from a quiet place. Yeah. Yeah, written, directed by and starring Jim from The Office, <laughs> which I didn't know before going into this. Man, things really went to shit for Jim. Yeah. And he was the nice guy. He was like the one like, good person in yeah, the office. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> things just went to hell after he left under Mifflin, man. <laughs> yeah. What is the deal with like comedians now making great horror movies? I know. First we had uh, Jordan Peele making Get Out, and now yeah. this one. And he's making more stuff too. Yeah. And uh, yeah, now uh, now good old Jim has uh, apparently <laughs> got a dark side. Yeah. <laughs> it's like an untapped well. I wonder if we, I wonder if we let Will Ferrell uh, pen a horror movie, what kind of crap we would get. God. Yeah, it makes me wonder or who's John next. C. Riley. <laughs> <laughs> He turns Dr. Steve Brule into a slasher character. Who oh, knows? Yeah, it turns out he was a psychopath this whole time. <laughs> yeah. That whole awkwardness was all a, a ruse. And it'll be directed by Tim and Eric. Ugh. <laughs> well, anyway, um, this movie, uh, <laughs> where do we even begin? Okay. Well, uh, first of all, let me just say, uh, this movie is what It Comes at Night should have been. You... you Stole you stole my thunder. Okay, on that sorry. One. Yeah. I mean, by, well, we're at least probably yeah, we both same. had the same thought. Yeah, this movie yeah. is what that movie should have been. There was no, there was actual monsters in this. I one. know, and it I, wasn't metaphorical bullshit. I, I was actually, I was worried about this one too because it felt like a trap movie. Yeah, because the the Much trailers like it comes at night. Yeah, because the trailers were, um, you know, very similar mm -hmm. to not only just that but a lot of horror movies where it's like. The big draw is, you know, what's the monster going to be? And, yeah. And all that. But, um, but even in the trailers, it did confirm. You yes, only saw a piece yes. of the monster, that, that's, but it was enough. That's what made me feel a little bit better. They did show a little bit. Not, they didn't reveal entirely what it was, but um, right. at, at least, you know, at least they, they tried to, hey, yes, we have a monster. We're gonna, It's, it's going to be cool. We're and not like those other movies. Goddamn, what a monster. Yes. <laughs> It wasn't quite what I thought it was going to be either, because yeah. based on the um, based on the trailers, it, it looked like some kind of giant insect. Yeah, because it had those weird that I wasn't expecting. I thought it was yeah. going to be some giant like Wendigo or some kind of furry mammalian kind of beast. Because I just saw the clawed hand, and I'm like, okay, what's yeah. this thing going to look like? Yeah, boy, are they sure. The best way I can describe spoilers, by the yeah, way. Spoilers, by the way. If you haven't seen the movie and you want to see it for yourself, pause the video, see, go to the theater and come back. See the movie, though. Yeah, definitely and, see the movie. And, uh... <laughs> uh but, I, go ahead. Yeah. Essentially, the monsters in this, they reminded me of the liquors from Resident Evil. Yes, that's what I was thinking, too. But they weren't... They didn't look campy. Like, it wasn't like the goofy... The, the big brain. The big brain and all that stuff. No, it... It looked like, uh... <laughs> It looked like if Slender Man and the Xenomorphs had a baby. You know what? Better analogy. It was... It was... It looked like what you would get if a liquor from Resident Evil 2 fucked a regenerator from Resident Evil 4. Oh, God. Yeah, so... But... Anyway, so... They're like eight feet tall, they hunt by sound, which is the whole yeah, premise they're of on the all, they're on all fours, they have giant teeth. Yes. And they have, like... A, their head like opens up into like multi-segmented compartments yeah and, and it has it has like this giant ear yes they, they made it like a point it looks to like show a that. conch shell almost yeah Just and it's it picked up into very its very you know subtle noises yeah and um yeah so uh they didn't really explain much about where they came from. Which was good, yeah, I thought. I like that too. Like you just the only real explanations you get, if any, are from the newspaper clippings in the background. Yeah. They, Dark Angels invulnerable. They just show up one day and they can't be killed. Yeah, they mentioned a meteorite that fell in Mexico, which is probably they might have came from outer uh, space. Uh, uh figured. 
Yeah, I caught that. Uh, that's, that's good enough. I, I missed that part. I, I guess that's a good enough explanation. Yeah, it was a brief clipping as they were panning the camera around, but I'm like, oh, something in Meteorite Falls in Mexico. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and they, they, they're completely blind, and they're very sensitive to sound. Yes. Which is why, uh, you know, and, and, and I, I do love uh, a movie that... Uh, goes into great detail about how their world works. Yes. And how they, like they've been avoiding this this whole time. Like they le they le uh, ugh, they lay um, like like trails of soft sand everywhere that they yeah. have to walk on, and you know they um, you know they tiptoe everywhere. Yeah. They communicate for most of the movie in sign language. Yeah. With with subtitles in case you know. Yeah. Well. Yeah, not not a whole lot of people know sign language. Yeah. Uh, which, by the way, I didn't uh, realize at first, but the uh, the eldest daughter was deaf. Yes. I didn't I didn't realize it. I saw she was wearing the the hearing aid, and at first I thought that was like you know maybe just some something they use to, you know, to hear to hear when when yeah. they're coming or something like that. Um, and they have to uh, do everything very quietly, uh, which. Uh, <laughs> And on uh, <laughs> yeah, there's uh, <laughs> an unfortunate reveal not uh, not too long after this movie starts that yeah. uh, Jim's wife is pregnant. Yeah, and uh, I don't know how ma how many of you know about uh, pregnancy, but childbirth is not a quiet activity. No, it's not. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, there's a whole scene in this movie where, uh... Yeah, Emily Blunt is, uh... Her water breaks. Yeah. And, uh... That was I, I was tense. I was... You were in your chair, like, just, <laughs> like, this almost. I was like... Well, I was like... I was like, how the fuck are they gonna get out of this? Like, and, and, uh, and to their credit, they did an amazing job of yeah. setting up everything. Like, they, they, um... And what's what's worse is that while she was giving birth, the the things happened to be yeah. in the house. It was in the house, yeah. Because, uh, uh, and Cause she stepped on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, we got ahead because uh, <laughs> earlier right. she was doing laundry and she had like these giant burlap sacks, and one of them gets caught on a nail in the basement. She's like. Mm -mm. And pulls it up, and the nail sticks up out of the wood. Yeah. And everybody in the theater at that point is just like, oh, oh no. shit. Oh, no. <laughs> and sure enough, she steps on it while giving birth. Yes. While avoiding the, the demon monster. And it was like, wow, oh this is God. this has gone south real yeah. quick. I know. I'm just, I was thinking to myself, just sitting there like, okay. It's like, we see the monster once. This has gotten really boring. Yeah, and then yeah, it got they, to that point, and I'm just like, oh, man, this shit just took off. What? That, that's like, you know, what would be the worst possible situation here? Giving birth to a yeah. child. And that's the thing that was going through my head. It's like, yeah, you could probably bite your bite down and keep your, keep yourself from screaming. But once you squat and the kid comes out, what's yeah. going to keep the kid so from screaming? Basically, and sure enough. <laughs> basically, well, the, the whole setup they had was like, because I, I was just like, how the fuck are they going to manage this? That's, that's yeah. like a death trap. Yeah. So what they did was, and this was kind of brilliant, they set up fireworks outside. And they were going to set them off while she was giving birth. So the fireworks would be making more no noise mask. than she... Basically, yeah. the idea was you have to be making more noise. Yeah. Then if you can mask your sounds with a louder sound, then yeah. it'll throw them off. That's why, uh, you know, when they were by the river, they, uh, you know, they made uh, yeah. noise and it wasn't... They went underneath a waterfall yeah. and they were able to talk. Yeah, they were able to speak normally without using sign language at that point. Yeah. Uh, so they had fireworks going... And then uh, when the baby was born, they had this. They made like this bunker, yeah. And they put the baby in this box with an oxygen. Yeah, it was mask. almost like a coffin, but yeah, it had an oxygen mask. Yeah, and uh, with an oxygen, and it was like lined with pillows and stuff. And they, they I, put the lid on. I honestly thought it was like knockout gas at first. I'm like, okay, yeah, I don't want to put the baby to I sleep, don't but I think don't think that, that's good. no, that would not have been good. That would not have worked. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was like, like, I love stuff like that when they, when yeah. they, you know, show, and this is movie is for obvious reasons, very show don't tell. Yes. This is they have to. pretty much the epitome of that. There's very little exposition. Everything was laid out perfectly. The world building, the set mm. design, everything had a purpose, which is what I loved about this. Yes. And like, you didn't even have to know what it was about. Like it's. Like the thing with the Christmas lights all over the fields. Yeah. So, 
it was essentially a warning system. If they were they were white, everything was normal. But there's a point while she's in the middle of labor that she pulls a lever and everything turns red. Yeah, and that's their that signal, was, like, oh like, shit, it's uh, happening. <laughs> Shit's going down. Yeah, fuck. Um, yeah. So the, the acting in this movie was really great too. Yes, because uh, again, they had to uh, you know convey Emo- things while keeping quiet. Yeah, especially especially the kids. Yeah. Kids did a really good job. Uh, <laughs> geez. But yeah, so essentially, going back to the beginning, the movie starts on day 89. That's mm-hmm. the only thing you get. So it hasn't been a year since those things came down. And yeah. there's this whole prologue where they're getting supplies from a grocery store that's been abandoned. Yeah, they're getting medicine. They, were, they, were, they had to get bottles of pills. Yeah. Which again, they, there were times where it seems like they just went out of their way to make the audience uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, well, that's... Because, uh, to be fair, this movie does rely heavily on jump scares, but the jump scares were at least effective. They're, they're good. This yeah. Is, this is the kind of setup where jump scares are perfectly fine. Yes, and um, the reason it works is because they get everything really quiet before they hit you with it. It's not like most uh, yeah. movies where they just the, hit you so many times you get desensitized. The sound design was great. Was brilliant. Was, I, I hope this movie gets nominated for something for, yes. for sound design. Because... <laughs> <laughs> there so, were, yeah, okay, go ahead. So there's this whole big prologue and like there, there's another kid there. There's three children and there's like a little toddler there and he wants this toy rocket which nearly blows their cover because he like knocks it off a shelf and the mother like, grabs it right before it hits the ground and the father says no we can't have it it's signing to the little boy like can't have it it's too, too loud. loud and so the the old the big sister the deaf one hands it to him but she takes the batteries out and the little toddler kid takes the batteries back as they're walking back he puts them in he's playing with it pew 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 it starts <laughs> making noise and one of the demons comes out and just slices him in half, and yep. that's the title card. And she's like, "Yeah, oh, boy. that's uh, that was a hell of a cold opening." <laughs> yeah. <Jeez. laughs> so the, then fast forward, I think it was like four hundred four ninety two. Yeah, was, so it was a little yeah. over a year, and uh, yeah, yeah. So they're they're trying to survive, and um, the uh, the older sister uh, was kind of messed up from that whole situation because she, she felt was, like it was her fault. Yeah, yeah and uh, she thought that. Uh, uh, what, did, did we learn anyone's name? No, we did not learn oh, anyone's we're just gonna, names. We're just going to call the dad Jim. Yeah, so, we'll so call him Jim. Um, but the mom she, was definitely not Pam. No, sorry. <laughs> guess uh, guess guess she didn't survive the uh, She the, didn't survive the, the mutant meteor. apocalypse. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> oh, boy. But you know what I bet Michael did? Uh, <laughs> Dwight probably did, too. Yeah, Dwight probably did, too. Prick. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. <laughs> I've actually been watching The Office recently, because uh, Comedy Central has been re- uh, like playing reruns of it. And yeah, I'm, I'm kind of getting into it actually. Uh, that's beside the point. Mm-hmm. Uh, so anyway, yeah, she she feels that the whole thing was her fault, and she kind of lashes out at Jim a bit because she thinks that he thinks um, like, like he like she it's thinks, her fault. Yeah, yeah, she thinks he blames her, but he doesn't really. Right. So uh, yeah, she runs away and. To visit his his grave, and that's when that's when the uh, that's when the, shit goes yeah, down. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I, I like that there. There's pretty much only one big like a, action scene in this, and it was very long because there was yeah. there's a few moments where you know, you know we see the monsters, you know we, they meet that guy in the woods uh, who oh yeah who yeah. just apparently his wife I don't know if he killed his wife or something. Well, they come across uh, this old man in the middle of the woods. It was in the trailer. Yeah. But what you didn't see was the fact that there's this old woman who I guess was his wife, was just lying there with a hole in her stomach, it, and I guess I don't know if he killed her himself. I, or I feel pre- I think demons. Did. I think they did. Yeah. And so he was so. I think that's the thing. He was so distraught that he just opens his mouth and screams to kind of commit suicide. Yeah. And the the little the the middle child is kind of terrified of it. Yeah, he's terrified of those. Because Jim things. Jim took him out to you know go fishing and everything. He didn't want to go. He yeah. Was like, he no, didn't want to no, be outside. No. And you know they they try to keep him calm. And the daughter wanted to go, and he's like, No, you need to stay here with your mother. Yeah. Um, but well, the, she kind of needed her actually. Yeah, <laughs> she really could have used her when, when yeah, shit was when her water down. broke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, 
yeah that that's pretty much uh pretty much the movie i do like uh how how it ended though yeah so uh, did I. the way they figured out how to actually stop these things because they as we mentioned before you know like they showed newspaper clippings of like the military trying to fight these things and they couldn't yeah and they figured out it was it was noise they're attracted to so um there's a scene where um the older daughter is looking for uh, the the middle son in the in the cornfields yeah <laughs> Why does shit always go down in the cornfields? Well, it's because he panicked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. It's one of the few cases where a panicker doesn't die in a horror film. Yeah, I was kind of shocked at that. Yeah. Um. So yeah, she's looking for him, and one of the one of the monsters comes up behind her, and um, they they have this thing where uh, apparently their presence like interferes with electricity or something. Yeah, like that's that. right. Because you see the lights flickering on and off whenever yeah. they get near. Yeah. So it interfered with her hearing aid and she was like touching it and like adjusting and everything and because yeah, it was like yeah, like yeah, imagine and, having really bad tinnitus yeah and like just a high-pitched frequency uh, in your left that's uh, what was happening uh, to her apparently it was on some frequency the monster didn't like so it just kind of went ah and then, it and then ran, left. ran away so uh, at the very end of the movie they're they're down in the uh i guess the radio room we can call it where yeah. they have all their surveillance stuff and um, one of the things got down there, and you know the the mom has has a gun, and yeah. uh, so that's when they figure out that that's when she figures out rather that her hearing aid bothers them. Yeah. So she takes the hearing aid, she puts it on this microphone, yeah, and, and the thing blasts the, thing the frequency, freaks the thing out, has a seizure. Yeah, and then and then the mom blows the thing's head off. Yeah, with a shotgun. I guess I guess. Their skin is impenetrable, but when their their heads are open, it's uh, yeah. The, when their head opens, yeah. it all those little segments. Classic video game logic. Yep, pretty much. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, this was a this was a ride. This was one of the better horror movies we've seen in a long time. Yeah, and it's very. It was just the right length. It's about ninety minutes. Yeah, and it follows the old seventies horror horror uh, beats where it's really slow. It's a little bit slow starting out. Mm-hmm. But then it hits its stride, and it just doesn't stop from that point on. Yeah. Yeah, I I really like this one. Um, the, it was the most discomfort I've had at a horror <laughs> movie in quite some time. <laughs> for, for multiple reasons. Yeah, I was watching you during that, man. <laughs> this you were was, back against your chair. Yeah, well, it was, it was a combination of not, just, like, fear and, and just pondering what like yeah. what's gonna what's gonna happen like how how does this gonna yeah. work how's that the guy next the guy next to me on this side of me yeah. was like this the whole time <laughs> and i'm just like this is i'm just sitting there with a big smile that, on that actually face. Uh, that actually does bring up something uh uh the one issue i had with this movie and it's not really the movie's fault it's more of an inherent problem yeah because the movie relies on silence so much, mm-hmm. uh, you can start hearing things in the theater. Yeah, that I was he- the, that was a big gripe too. Yeah, I, I heard some people talking, and yeah, even if they were whispering, I heard like there's some woman behind me. It's like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I'm just yeah. like, oh my god. I and know I, you're just whispering, but I still want. To shut I up. I heard like chairs squeaking. I think my chair was squeaking too. Every yeah, time my I, chair was every squeaking. Every time I would shift my legs, and people I could hear people all the way in the back yeah. of the theater like, <laughs> and I'm just like, oh my god. Again, that's not the movie's it's fault. It's not the movie's it's fault. Just, it's just when you rely on silence, it's really <laughs> this hard to is stay a, quiet. This is a movie that would be uh, better shown like in your home rather than a theater. This is this was not a theater experience. I don't think. No, but I'd still I'd still say go see it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, but this is definitely one you want to get on Blu-ray. Yeah. Watch with the lights out and put headphones on. <laughs> like how I usually play horror video oh, games. Oh boy. <laughs> Fuck All right. Know. Well, uh, that that was a quiet place. Uh, yes. Do you have anything else you want to say? Uh, other than the fact that it was awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was very awesome. Um, go see it. And uh, we'll be back with whatever the hell we're seeing next. Probably Isle of Dogs, because uh, I totally forgot that came out. Yeah. And or I want to see that. something else. Or so. I, I might end up doing, like, Rob Watches on, on Isle, of Dog, Isle of Dogs. Oh, yeah? Because it's animated. Okay. Um, but, yeah, we'll, we got... Well, what's what's coming up? It's April, so we got Super Troopers. On 420, and then... Yeah, and then... End Infin- of the month is Infinity War. War. Woo! <laughs> That's gonna be a time. The most anticipated movie of all time. Pretty much. God, I hope they don't blow it. <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> I don't think they will, but yeah. we'll see. Um, yeah, uh, great movie. 
a lot of good scares. Be best one of the best horror movies you've seen in a while. So. Yep. All right. Well, that's all we got about that's that all one. We right? Got. All right. All right. Take care. Later.